Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, folks, welcome to another broadcast here today on The Coming Apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and we've got a powerful, very powerful breaking information to bring to you right now. There's no question, something's going on today, and everybody's scrambling to try to figure out what it is. And we know for sure that um, a squadron of 12 F-22 Raptor fighter jets have been deployed are already in the Persian Gulf area near Iran, and uh, the tensions couldn't be any higher than what's going on right now in the Middle East. And how does this affect everything taking place? Now, these stealth F-22 fighter jets, very powerful, but they really are, and that right there, you're looking at uh, an F-35. Certainly, the F-22 Raptors are there in the area. And they have a tremendous capability, but they're not the only um, asset in the area. I mean, we've got battleships in the area, destroyers, submarines, nuclear, F-35s. Everybody's surrounding that in Straits of Hermos. What does this all mean? Especially when we got news today that the uh, vice president of the United States had to cancel a trip to New Hampshire to talk about o the opiate problem instead summons to an emergency meeting in the white house that we still can't get our hands on why especially when the president had no scheduled events and then we found out that a nuclear submarine a russian nuclear sub caught fire it, they did get the fire out but 14 of their sailors lost their lives the kremlin has called a emergency meeting Everybody's trying to figure out what's going on in light of the fact that the Israelis were bombing uh, several locations, 10 locations of Iranian uh, locations in Syria last night. It's getting very serious. We need help to understand what does this mean for the whole world trade system, the, the G20 and everything else, the Chinese trade war. Let's get an expert in here. Let's get the man that knows what's going on. Bob Kudla from TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Bob, how you doing? I'm, I'm great, Paul. Maybe I should change my company name to Ezekiel38.com <laughs> where everything's lining up. I mean, today, you know, we'll go macro, but today in the trading day was, was one of the weirdest trading days out there you know usually we, uh, july 4th week is kind of dead and you expected the market to like slowly they call it melting up into the close because there's no volume to sell and then all of a sudden we got a bit of a sell-off and then we got news then we got news it was the russians but then why was gold flying higher into the close at the same time you would think if we're going to war with iran why is oil collapsing why did copper collapse and then why did the stock market eventually melt up into the close and volatility collapsed? I mean, there's a lot of cross currents. I'll tell you, veteran traders and novice traders, everybody's confused right now what's going on. So from a micro standpoint, who knows, we might get some news while, uh, while we're on the air today. But from a macro dra uh, drop uh, picture to look, look you know, in, as a backdrop is that, look, China is in trouble. So they have um, the reason why they did that fig leaf for the meeting with Trump. They need our food, Paul, and they needed Trump to give them something so they can buy the food because they their their slaughtering of their pigs is twice as high as they as they let on. And we're talking fifty five zero percent of the hogs in their country are diseased. They're what? not fit for consumption. What? I mean, that that is amazing number. And and that's going to affect worldwide hog sales and production. And, and you know, if, 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 if it gets worse, you're talking about a, a potential, you know, pork famine. You know, in China, that's their main food, you know, from a protein standpoint, is, is hogs. And so keep an eye on that. At the same time, they're having problems with their grain markets. They... Uh, they have this um, this this borer, this grain borer that's is eating into their into their into their stocks, and they're losing about thirty percent of their grains. And then you don't know, look at the United States. You know our our growing belts are, are underwater. So it's China's in trouble, and they have to. Uh, they can't feed their people. Watch out. 
And then we're all, are seeing that their interbank lending rates in China are starting to seize up, which means that they may have to devalue their currency, Paul. When they did that last time in 2015, we had a stock market crash here of 18 to 20 percent in about six weeks because all of a sudden they just they basically export deflation around the world. So keep an eye on that, folks. Watch the Chinese, the yuan value against the dollar. If it starts to weaken, then you need to you need to strap in because things are going to happen. And then the Federal Reserve will have no choice, Paul, but to um, but to dump rates. And when that happens, we're right, right back where you and I have been talking now for over two years. you got to get your hands on gold, silver, the miners, and, uh, and cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. And look at today. It was just amazing. You know, crude and copper are, are telling us that there's economic, worldwide economic growth is, is not there, but also that there's not a war imminent, unless it's going to be the best kept secret in the world. But gold going up. Is telling you that maybe something else is happening in a monetary standpoint. So, you know, then, oh, and the other thing too is here's pretty wild. Another thing that happened, just talking about our crazy world, Christine Lagarde has is, is been nominated to be the new president of the European Central Bank just the day after she got convicted for corruption. I mean, what? you can't make this stuff up. You know, you would think it was a, a parody site, but it's true. And she's talking negative interest rates. So, Negative interest rates will be good for people who own homes for a while. Can we be able to refinance our, our, our debts? But uh, beyond that, um, you better get your hands on uh, some, some hard assets because they're just going to inflate everything else away, Paul. Folks, Bob Kudler's here with us. Bob Kudler from TradeGeniusAcademy.com. That's TradeGeniusAcademy.com. He's running also just so you might say, how does this man have so much knowledge of all the things going on? Well, when you're studying the markets, the currencies, values, the Bitcoin values, the gold, the silver, and the stock markets. And to, to understand those areas, you got to understand well, what's going on in the housing industry. What's going on in oil? What about futures? What's going on in the uh, wages uh, and also the unemployment levels? You know, Main Street is, is where the bread and butter is, folks. But Wall Street, a lot of times is just one of the indicators, but it's not the only one. So stock market up or down, that can fluctuate. But what can't fluctuate is people's jobs. And right now the economy is cranking, there's no doubt about it. And the stock market hit all-time highs. But you're bringing out some great points here, Bob. What do we do with the fact, that why did gold go up and oil go down? It's kind of weird, especially when you think that we're sitting here on a Ezekiel 38 moment. We have the whole Persian Gulf. We got I, I, Israel bombing Iranian sites in Syria. We got Russia with a warship sitting in Havana, Cuba, and the president walking around holding hands with Kim Jong-un in North Korea. I mean, can you help me understand this crazy world? Yeah. Hey, Paul, if I could, I'd probably be a trillionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you serious? Uh, I know it's just you know what this is bizarre. If we were to say if we you and I would have been talking about this was going to happen ten years from now, they would have locked us up. <laughs> and and still, now it's daily, they, it's daily, now it's daily news. You know, um, I just think there's, I think what's happening now is that look, there's there's no more no more assets that are not what they call uh, spoken for by debt. So you start getting these weird things starting to happen. Look, trade is going to collapse. And you and I talked about this before, and that is actually not a bad thing for the United States. It's really bad for China, Japan, Korea, and um, the European Union. Okay, but it's not necessarily bad for us because look what's happening. The jobs are rolling back into the states. And, uh, and they couple that with the fact that the United States now is the world's number one producer of oil and natural gas. You know, so, and we could feed ourselves. Right. So if push comes to shove and we have to dive back into our our cave, we could survive. Yeah. And when I mean survive, I mean, we're not talking about bread lines, but places like China will experience what we experienced during uh, the Great Depression. And totalitarian regimes do not usually fare well when these things happen because they don't know how to react you know, to uh, to news. They're not used to getting pushback. 
and they react usually pretty violently, and then the wheels come off the uh, the apple cart. And then with you know with Iran, you know, people ask me all the time. Look, I'm fairly isolationist. I'm a former Marine Corps officer. I don't like us being engaged in war. I, I don't think it's Christian to, to be that way. You want to defend your family, but you shouldn't be out there using it to, you know, afford your, your national interests, you know, trust God for that. But but Iran is a kind of a, a, a weird animal in that, that the Shia believe that by bringing on this some sort of Armageddon, if you will, of, of the Shia variety, that they're going to bring in the Mahdi. And so you can't, you can't negotiate with that kind of thinking sometimes, you know. So I think there's a lot of concern that, that, there's there's people within the within the the Iranian uh, regime that are are trying to push for the end of the world kind of stuff. So, you know, there there is that element to to consider. And I'm, you know, and I'm not one of those guys that are you know sitting on the mountaintop waiting for God. You know, I just think uh, I just think that we have to be aware of the the signs here. They're they're like they're like right in front of you. You know, it brings me the old analogy where the guy was sitting on the roof and the floods were coming up. And a boat came by, and he said, no, no, I'm waiting on God. Then the waters got higher, and a helicopter by, no, no, I'm waiting for God. And then he drowned. He said, God, why didn't you save me? He goes, I sent you a boat and a helicopter. You know? <laughs> so, you know, people, sometimes people just don't see things because they're kind of caught up in the day-to-day. But you take a step back, and there's some chess pieces moving around here, Paul. You know, when you talk about chess pieces moving around, and it's a good point you're bringing out here. Folks, if you go to TradeGeniusAcademy.com, Use the promo code SUMMER and save 35% on uh, uh, this summer's uh, specials in July. Tell them Paul Begley sent you, but use that promo code SUMMER and, uh, and tell them I sent you there and, and say, get that savings. And there's a lot of chess piece moving. Now, one thing I've just looked at, silver's up now to 15 over $15 an ounce. Gold, nearly $1,400 an ounce. The, the Dow Jones, all-time high. And Bitcoin now is at 10822 I think, just a couple moments ago. And that's $2,500 more than it was last month uh, when we were talking with each other, Bob. Uh, so Bitcoin continues to rise. And I think you've got some great uh, – we're showing graphics right now just this year. It's a, quite amazing. Is it going to keep going? I mean, are we, is it going back to 20000 Oh, um, our our viewpoint is the next major stop for it will be in the mid 30s, Paul. Just based on the math of, of of how the cryptocurrencies work in terms of this this phenomenon called having, which means that the people that are mining the new the new coins are only going to get half of what they they get in the future, and that usually brings the price up. And Litecoin moved up eight times during its having process. And so we expect Bitcoin to do at least the same, and that would bring it into anywhere between twenty-four and forty-eight thousand dollars. And and we have some work done that says, hey, mid thirties looks really reasonable. And you're talking that's a three x move from here, which is absolutely reasonable. And and so I think I sent you a chart. Our last trade was up over fifty-seven percent. We're consolidating right now. It popped again today. And it might be ready to make its next move higher. So, the, what what Bitcoin and what gold are telling you is to get in things that are not correlated to the banking world. And, and we've been pounding that table forever. You know, we're 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 gold bugs here, uh, but we love the miners because they're leveraged to gold and silver. That means if gold goes up ten percent, the miners typically go up forty to eighty percent. That that's what kind of moves you get. And we've seen that last month from May to June. We've had some huge moves. Now we're getting a little bit of consolidation, and it might be ready to break out again because everybody's expecting the Federal Reserve to reduce interest rates in July, and they may try to front run it. So tremendous times to make um, to make some good money. And if I could just correct one thing, Paul, the uh, the specials that we have they use summer. That's for things that are unbundled. But what we did was we created a six bundles that are that are. Um, discounted over 60 percent but there it's one or the other so i just want to make sure it's clear so if somebody calls if you buy a bundle it's uh it's already pre-discounted okay and if you go to trade like a genius.com or tradegeniusacademy.com you can get to us okay and there brock brock is showing some summer special bundles there on the screen so they've already been pre-priced for you 
makes it easier. Uh, folks, Bob Kudla is with us with TradeGeniusAcademy.com. He's showing you some great bundled uh, summer specials for this month. Really help you. And there's a lot of serious traders out there right now. They really love to get this information. And if you're a beginner even, uh, Bob's the guy you want to get a hold of to get you started. He'll get you started. He was, we've been showing your charts, Bob, as we've been going here, how that your spot trades where you're, 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 you know, you alert your uh, followers out there. Now's the time to buy or now's the time to sell and, and how that you've had tremendous success this whole year, but especially about the last six weeks, haven't you? Yeah, the the you know the a lot of things are in motion now, Paul, and, and those things that you're seeing on the charts, we actually we provide those signals onto your PC, so you could trade things that we don't even trade. Uh, the same rules apply. It's all about buying and selling momentum, and uh, and so you can get in our trading room. You can go uh, take our training classes. You can just get our signals, or you can also get the the signals put right on the PC, and and we'll teach you how to. How, you know how to how to read it and and how to take action on them. So we have a lot of ways to help people, and we have a lot of new traders. And I'm in the room all the time, helping people understand the, uh, you know, the nuances. And and once you get the lingo, and once you kind of understand what how trading really works, you'll do really well. Bob, also we're talking here about some of these wild current events going on now. Uh, there's something going on. You, you know, we've talked about the fact that the squadron of F-22 fighter jets are sitting there just off the, uh, in the Persian Gulf, not far, very near Iran. We've got big ships in the water and striker groups and submarines and all kinds of things in the assets everywhere. You talk about the Jordanian base and Qatar and, you know, Kuwait and, and we're just everywhere. But the threats today, Iran threatening you know, to eliminate Israel from the earth in 30 minutes if the United States was to strike Iran. But the fact is, Iran just keeps shooting down drones and sabotaging oil tankers and threatening and now enriching uranium. I mean, doesn't this make things very vulnerable for the everybody out here, not just war, but economics? I mean, isn't this affecting everybody? You know, you know, I would I would say that ten years ago or fifteen years ago, Paul, the the answer to that would be a resounding yes. But but you know, OPEC in the Middle East are only now twenty percent of the world's oil, and both Saudi Arabia and Iran, if if war happened in that region, neither one of them are going to benefit from that activity. So I I'm looking for a problem coming somewhere else. You know somewhere out of left field. It may be Iranian-based, it may even be Saudi Arabian-based, but I don't think it's going to be inside the Strait of Hormuz itself because there's no way China and India are going to let Iran cut off their own oil supplies in Japan. And, you know, and Saudi Arabia provides oil to the, uh, to the Europeans. So, you know, they have big clients here that wouldn't take too kindly for some amateur moves here. So, Something else is going to be at play, and also the F-22s. You know, they're they're what they're they're what's called air superiority fighters. They're they're not really used for bombing, and so they're there to protect something. So it's going to be, you know, they might have the B-2s in route already. They may have that that new generation bomber that everybody has been speculating about for 20 years. You know, the B-2 is 30 years old, Paul. So who knows what they have. You know, underneath the the covers here for a use just for today, maybe to take out Iran's nuclear sites. I don't know, but I think you'll see more of that, and then maybe a show of force to keep the Iranians from closing the strait. I don't know, but you know, I just think that that you know, cooler heads are going to keep that whole thing from going. I think, and and I just see problems coming somewhere else. But you know, but who knows? You know, look. People are losing their ability to rationalize uh, thought. So maybe maybe I'm just being idealistic here. Uh, Bob, also, while well, we're taking a look at all these things going on, of course, and how it affects the interest rates, the President of the United States really thought for sure that uh, you know Jeremy Powell was going to lower the interest rates. And, he, I mean, he was just sure of it. And then when Jeremy didn't, he didn't take too kindly to it. I mean, he, he really upset. Is it because the President really feels... We need that to help 
push this housing market along just a little bit? Is he afraid of a little bit of slippage here? You know, I, I, I think what he's doing is he put he's putting the whole decision on the central banks, Paul. I think he's being very politically astute. And if things start to slip and the Federal Reserve was slow to act, he could say, look, guys, I've been begging them for months to do this, and they've done nothing. And, oh, by the way, the Democrats told me I was foolish to intervene. So I think it's more political than anything else. If you notice, I mean, everything around here, at least where I live, is 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 labor shortages. Maybe somewhere else, parts of the country that have different issues, but it seems to be, we seem to be... Uh, doing pretty well. The housing's, I think, an issue because I don't think they're building enough houses, Paul, period. And I think Trump mentioned that yesterday in an interview he did that he may have to intervene and put legislation in to require these cities to build enough homes to house, you know, to house the middle class within their borders instead of uh, allowing the um, the NIMBY crowd to, to hold off. So, but I think some of this is theater, and but by September, October, I think we'll start seeing the rate cuts only because everybody else will be negative by then, Paul. And which is just an amazing thing. You have now almost 45 or 50 percent of all the debt in the world has a negative interest rate to it, except in the United States, where we have our interest rates are, are, are a little tight. And I think they're just going to have to give way at some point. And then I think going into next year, that's actually going to help the housing markets. Uh, and also, Bob, as you're taking a look at everything going on now with oil, Texas is just cranking out the oil. They're number one in the world. Uh, North, uh, North Dakota does wonderful. I mean, the entire U.S. now is just cranking out the oil. You mentioned the fact that OPEC nations are now less than 20% of the oil's production. Uh, it, we, really, the, the, um, the move by the president to really – cut some of the bureaucracy, turn those oil companies loose, lower some of the bureaucracy and red tape, and just kind of let the American economy go. You know, just take the bridles off and let it run. Seems to be working great. Um, at some point, though, the EU seems to be really struggling. You mentioned they're, you know, they're, <laughs> I don't know who's in charge. I mean, is the EU going to make it? I mean, I guess that's a question. Is the EU going to make it? Iron and clay, Paul. Iron and clay. It's not mixing well, is it? It's just not mixing yeah. well. Yeah. I think you're going to break apart. You know, they, there's so many divides there, it's not even funny. So, uh, you know, you have what I call the Protestant North and the Catholic South, and they, they see the world differently. This is, this is millennial. This isn't anything, you know, any kind of religious bias. It's just that you have... The North has always been operating under the environment of called the uh, the, the servant king, and the um, and the the South, which is Latin and Roman, always operated under the surmise of the God King, and and so they just see the world differently in terms of of how they treat their citizens, how they treat finances, how they tax, and you know those things of that nature, and. Uh, and you, you see the break now economically too. The countries that are, are fairly well to do in terms of their fiscal responsibilities are in the north. Those who are profligate are in the south. And it's just no accident. And I think that's where we'll see the fracture. It would it'd be interesting to me to see where France falls in that. So they're kind of a they're kind of a tweener country, you know, in terms of their politics and their and their history and. And you know, and how they do things. And so, if if France starts to struggle, then you'll see the Nordic countries break away. If not, France, Germany will try to stay together, and everybody else in the Mediterranean region will fall away. That's my view. You know, it's a great observation, and I want to say thank God for all of you. There's over a thousand of you joined us live right now on YouTube, and then of course all of you who are watching on Periscope and Roku, and Roku satellite television, our website everybody that's out there, and the thousands of you that will watch this on the archives. You know, you could pick up the phone. If you really wanted to find out how to get into this Trade Genius Academy uh, and start taking some classes and understand real easy, get some of the info, just pick up the phone and call 1-800-949-1408. That's 1-800-949-1408. Get, you know, you can get started uh, in trading and understanding it. And uh, Bob's a great teacher, and he's got some great, great software to help you along the way. And his tips are amazing. 
And so uh, it's just incredible, the, the, the percentage. And he's batting pretty high, folks. And I tell you what, people like that. And they like the honesty. They like the, the fact that Bob's a, a family man, family-owned company. He's a Christian and uh, really means to take care of his followers as well as he can. And I really appreciate that. Bob, we're, we're in a situation now where I don't know what to think about this G20 summit. What, what really did – I mean, I know the trade war's off, right? Or is it on? Or is it – what happened at the G20? Well, I mean, from the standpoint of China and the U.S., which really all that mattered is that um, China needed the U.S. to give them something so the Chinese can buy our agricultural products. So Trump relent, rel, you know, relented on some of the lower uh, tech uh, chips for Huawei. And, uh, and, and so a lot of the Chinese to go ahead and say, hey, we'll start buying your ag products again. And then they agreed to talk. But look. Uh, I'll say it again, the, we'll, we will not have a trade deal with China ever because the, what China wants and what we want are, you know, apples and, and, and steamships. And, and so it will never, we'll never come together. The tariffs will stay on. They may morph into something else and they may increase. And we're going to start layering them on to Europe as well. One thing that people don't realize is the Europeans uh, built a back door out of the SWIFT system, which is the banking system for a worldwide trade, so to allow the, the Iranians to trade directly with the Europeans for euros to oil, and and that 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 kind of subsumes the uh, the sanctions that the United States have put on Iran, so that's causing some tension between the Europeans and the U.S. And let's not forget, the Europeans are always out for the Europeans. And, and they're, they're very good at making the U.S. do things we don't want to do. But Trump, Trump's kind of a disruptor. So I think he's going to react to that. Other things in the G20 were really minor in comparison. One thing of note is that the, that the Chinese kind of um, rebuffed the Brazilians. They rebuffed the Canadians, and, which was, I thought was interesting because that's where a lot of their food comes from. And so I think there's some really interesting things happening. China, I mean, Japan and the U.S. are strong, and then Trump took this opportunity to uh, uh, to show that he's not a warmonger and went and shook uh, King John Un's hand and trying to get that thing kicked off again. But at any rate, he did something that was unexpected, and so that he, you know, basically portraying himself as that. Look, I like to pull back from the brink on these things if I can, and be a diplomat, so they can't accuse him of of lighting fires everywhere, especially if we're going to go after Iran. So it's going to be interesting to see. You know, you are right about that. And, there's, you know, you can't say that Trump is a, is a hawk because in a lot of ways he plays hardball. He plays hardball, but then he will always give people a way out. Look what he did with Iran after the, the downing of the U.S. drone. I mean, everybody, everyone said, okay, he's going to hit him now. He's going to hit him now. And he says, you know, wait a minute. I could have I took out 150 of their guys. And when I heard it was 150, I'm thinking they didn't draw, they haven't drawn first blood yet. It just, I just don't want to do that. That was huge. It was, a, it was a real show of mercy. It made the emperor look bigger than he is even, and it shows that he is, he's got a heart. He actually cares. He doesn't want to go there if he doesn't have to. But you don't want to shove him into a corner and force him to. And he will use the stick if he has to. And if you watch his negotiation in his book, Bob, that he wrote, uh, The Art of War. He negotiates just like he does in business. He will crush people if they don't accept the first olive branch. And I think he's offering it now a second time to Kim Jong-un. That was big, a big move. It shows he's a bigger man than what most people think. And uh, uh, I think it's overall helping him. Let me ask you this question, though. What about this move by Nike to, to get the brand new shoes out, ready to go with the flag on, the U.S. flag, and then Kaepernick, gets upset about it, so they drop the line. Do you think that's going to hurt their company, or does this actually help them? I mean, what kind of a move is this? I just don't know. These these multinational companies now are, are thinking that they, they have some sort of um, mandate to change the world to, you know, supplant, you know, national interests. And so... You know, Nike probably figures I get a lot of my business outside the United States. You know, I can show that we're independent of U.S. policy, blah, blah, blah. But push comes to shove, all this profits come from the United States. So 
I, I think once we roll into a recession, Paul, all these companies are going to get punished mercilessly. And, and so now, you know, things are going well enough that they can act like they're, um, you know, social justice warriors with no, no cost to them. They figured this cost them nothing. You know, they said, well, you know, the people who are against or for Betsy Ross are people who aren't going to buy our sneakers anyway. So this is a way for us to show how we're with those people, you know, without realizing that at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're biting the hand that feeds you and it'll come back to haunt them. All of them. Same with the big tech companies, too. You know, this thing only stuff like this only works when things are are going too easy. And then when things get tough. They're going to find themselves with no friends. Yeah, yeah. When things get tough, people won't forget, uh, and they'll they'll remember the people who uh, snubbed them or uh, you know really gave us the cold shoulder. It won't play well with the American public. Not at the end of the day, uh, Bob. There's also the question has to be has to be asked. I guess is uh, uh, when we get closer to the end here, do people understand that um, the economy does go in ebb and flows normally? And it's been on a ride. It's been on a long ride. And the doom and gloomers kept saying this economy was going to crash. I don't see it crashing. I mean, the market does a little fluctuation. But do you see us? I mean, let me just say this. I didn't see the first two debates. I spent the first one watching paint dry and the second one watching grass grow. And I got a, I got a bigger thrill out of it than whatever was going on down in Miami. But do, do you think that the – is this election cycle going to do anything to the economy in a negative way or a positive way? Oh, well, if a Democrat becomes president, we'll be in a depression within six months. If, okay. if, if Trump gets elected, he'll push us into a recession sometime in his first in his last term. So uh, but for sure, if the Democrats get in, I mean, look at this. If you, they're looking, they're going to let the inmates out of the asylum. And I mean, just just listening to their rhetoric, it, it's got to you got to get people a lot of pause. I think people will be going to ground. People will be closing up shop they'll be getting their cash they'll be moving their money out of the country they're going to try to keep these assets from being uh, you know squ uh, squandered and stolen and and um but i think people won't sense that till we get closer to election time in the meantime paul I, I just can't see a recession coming between now and then unless something comes out of the blue like you know a war that we lose or you know major terrorism here or you know, something with the climate, you know, when I mean by the climate, I'm talking about like a volcano or something or a major earthquake or something that disrupts the ability for the world supply chain right. to operate. Other than that, I think the next 12 months is going to be looking like the last 12. Wow. I, I have to agree with you. Unless we get hit with an asteroid or in a massive, uh, you know, Yellowstone blows its top, I think we're okay for a little while. And, and, and people need to understand God's blessings on America. We keep standing with Israel, Bob. We keep standing with Israel. Don't forget that blessing, guys. It is a real, it's a real tangible thing, okay? You got to still do the right things. And we got some things in America that still needs to be fixed. And we need some repentance on, but, I, uh, but uh, at this moment... You know, there's a, there's a blessing on America. Let's let's stay with it and let's let's keep doing the right things. Um, Bob, once again, your phone number to call Bob is at one eight hundred. Put that on the screen, Brock. One eight hundred nine zero nine, I believe fourteen zero nine. That's one eight hundred nine zero nine fourteen zero nine. Go to Detroit. Fourteen zero eight. Excuse me. One eight hundred nine four nine fourteen zero eight. That's one eight hundred nine four nine. 1408. That's TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Use the promo code SUMMER for that 35% uh, savings, plus he's got some other savings. Uh, so, Bob, what else you want to tell us here? Sign us off. We'll let you pitch us out. What, what's going on? What should they do? Oh, well, I mean, besides stopping by the website, hey, if you don't get through on the phone, a lot of people call a lot of times after our show. Um, you can always hit us up a chat, too, or shoot us an email and we'll get back to you. Uh, and, um, uh, just so you don't miss an opportunity to talk to us and and look i mean just you know just keep the faith you know i think uh i think from an economic standpoint we're in good shape i think uh you know america will do the right thing i think the crazies on the left aren't going to get in power and uh i think even the democratic national committee now is probably a little worried and so just be up be about your business 
just be mindful and uh, and I think we're going to be in pretty good shape at least to um, into the election. So um, that's it. Bob Kudla, folks, from TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Christian, a very good, strong Christian man, great advice, family man, great company with a great track record. So you can and you can trust him. Okay, you can really trust him. He'll help you. Go to www.tradegeniusacademy.com. That's www.tradegeniusacademy.com. Use that promo code SUMMER. Save that 35%. Tell them Paul Begley sent you, okay? And pick up the phone and call them 1-800-949-1408. We'll see you next time, guys. I'll be live tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern with all the updates from around the world. God bless all of you.